This is the uh, attic of the over the garage. So that stuff over there is what I've been avoiding. But I wanted to show you this bunch of old gardening stuff. Lots of old crap up here. It's very hot. Look at that. That is sulfur. Very strangely, in an old brown paper thing. Probably put up here for gardening purposes. Um, sulfur is a, a soil acidifier. Soil around here tends to be fairly neutral in pH. So you may remember from my uh, wood gasification video that I noted that the charcoal that comes out of this thing is considered by many to be highly uh, appropriate for gunpowder because it's really fluffy. Well, that got me thinking because, you know, what do you need for gunpowder? You need charcoal and then you need, well, you need sulfur, okay? Had that. Well, you need one other thing. You need a potassium nitrate. Doggone, I didn't have any potassium nitrate. Huh. I have potassium nitrate, which uh, opens up, I guess you could call it an opportunity. I think it's important to recognize I'm not interested in blowing shit up. I just want to play around with this reaction. And so the way I'm going to play around with the reaction is to think, I have four different kinds of carbon. I've got ground up charcoal that I made in my ball mill. I've got activated carbon that I made from that charcoal, which is supposedly has an extremely high um, surface area and a lot of reactivity in a sense of adsorption. I've got this stuff and I've got graphite. Now, essentially what happens is the potassium nitrate is the oxidizing agent. The charcoal is the fuel. The sulfur works as a flux in order to lower the temperature of the reaction to make it go. If you want to get a really nice gunpowder reaction, you need the right charcoal. And the other thing is you need to mix it right. So there's really kind of three ways to mix it. You can mix it dry, you can mix it wet, or you could do something called corning, which is where you put it in a press and you press it so that the molecules get really close together. So if you think about it, you can do a four by three matrix of these four types of carbon with three different mixture methods. So that's what we're going to do, and we're going to see what we get when we try 12 different kinds of gunpowder. So hang on to your hats. Let's see what happens. It turns out sulfur is really dense. Who knew? So they're all mixed uh, to the same proportions to the best of the ability of this poor um, unfortunate sucker back in a semi-remodeled bathroom. So I've got all my dry mixes together. It's time to start in on a wet mix. It's interesting. They look very different. This is uh, the charcoal powder. This is the gasified charcoal. Uh, I think it has something to do with how grainy my sulfur is obviously on my dry ones. I'm going to have to get really aggressive on getting those mixed together well. I'm hoping that the, the wet mixes will kind of dissolve those little balls of sulfur. So anyway, on to the wet mixes. Um, they say the best uh, thing to mix um, gunpowder with is the urine of a drunken priest. Um, sadly, I'm not a priest. I, uh, I do have the uh, other bases covered. And I've been hydrating, so let's get on with it. Luckily, I have an available bathroom. I don't know how much of this I need. I do know that uh, anything that goes in has to be dried out, so I'll start off light. Mix it into a kind of a moist paste, see what we get. It's the real thing, by the way. I didn't see any reason not to go all out on this. 
be interesting to see what happens with the powdered charcoal because typically my powdered charcoal has been a little bit shy about moisture. It might be a little difficult to get it to take. I've had a tendency to overwater the first couple. The problem with overwatering is it's not like I can put these things in the oven to dry them out. I've had the stuff drying overnight and uh, this is my uh, charcoal powder, uh, black powder. They're all very different. This is the activated carbon black powder. It looks like the charcoal powder, but it's, uh, I don't know, it feels a little moister. It's hard to describe. Here is the uh, gasified charcoal black powder. It's much fluffier, if you will. And then the graphite actually turned out to be the hardest. I still don't have big hopes for the graphite. I don't think it's going to work. I'm here with my, yes, you know it, folks, that's my gunpowder. Um, so in order to corn something, I need to put it into a press. And you can buy black powder presses, but they're hellishly expensive and really kind of complex. Now, this thing was neither expensive nor complex. And it's called a, a pollen press, but I have to tell you something. From what I'm looking at, it is not for pollen. Um, it's rather nicely machined, and essentially you just put stuff in between these two uh, aluminum tubes and uh, press it in there. And I suspect that merely by purchasing this, I am now on a DEA watch list. So let's go ahead and press some of this stuff. Let's start with A. So we're going to start with A. This is my mixture of uh, just regular old powdered charcoal that I mixed wet. We're going to go ahead and put it in this press and give it a squeeze and leave it. I think we'll leave it overnight. I doubt I really have to leave it that long, but I'll do it anyway. This thing is supposed to produce a lot of, uh, a lot of pressing power. On the flip side, though, apparently it's easy to strip this screw if you try too hard. So I'll just keep going until it feels like I've done enough. And then we'll see what it looks like in the morning. Let's see what this looks like. It's been, uh, been in there for about 12 hours. I haven't yet learned how to pull it out without breaking the plug. I'll figure it out. So let's set up the scene here. We're going to go ahead and burn five gram uh, samples of each of our gunpowder preparations. We're going to start and burn each of the powdered preparations. Then we'll burn the wet ones. And then we're going to burn the corned ones. Um, as you remember, we're going to burn them in order. The first one will be powdered charcoal, then we'll burn activated carbon, then we'll burn the gasified charcoal, and last we'll do the gunpowder that I made with graphite. So we're going to start with all the powder, as I said. The um, presumption going in is that the graphite is not going to burn very well, and that the activated carbon and the gasified charcoal are going to do the best. I guess we'll see whether or not that's true. Um, in the sense that they're the ones that have sort of the highest surface area, etc. So for the powdered, I've got this fine mesh screen that I think will be okay for the regular samples. But for the powdered samples, we'll use a little piece of paper to hold them. Five grams each. So this is the simple powdered charcoal. Okay, that was cool. Actually burned better than I thought it would. This will be the sample that is made with activated carbon.
surprisingly difficult to get it going. This will be the sample made with gasified charcoal. honestly say I can say that they're really that different. I did manage to burn a hole in my screen with that one. The screen may not make it through these trials. That's graphite. Unsurprisingly, graphite performs perhaps less uh, enthusiastically than the others do. That's not really to, a surprise, I don't think. This is the wet mix of straightforward. Mm, still hot. This is the wet mix of charcoal powder. quite something. So we just learned something from what just happened. Um, the first thing is that when you come down to properly formulated gunpowder, five grams is a lot of gunpowder. The second thing we figured out is don't leave the rest of your gunpowder near where you are testing gunpowder because it's going to burn up. So let's start over again. Here's five grams of is five grams of wet mixed charcoal powder gunpowder. Yeah, that burned pretty well, didn't it? Here's five grams of wet mixed activated carbon gunpowder. I honestly think the uh, regular did better than the activated carbon. Here's five grams of wet mixed this is from the gasified charcoal. So and let's do five grams of wet mixed graphite gunpowder. Again, if, if it's like usual, it's not going to burn very well compared to the other gunpowders. It's just not as exuberant, that's for sure. Let things cool off for a minute, and then we'll move on to the corn gunpowders. This one is not quite five grams because I'm out. The rest of it burned up of gunpowder made with. Oh, that was good. That burned very nicely. That was made with regular charcoal or regular uh, regular charcoal. This is activated carbon. Getting hard. Getting hard to find a. This is that was made with the gasified charcoal, and this one is graphite.
once again, unsatisfying. Now, we could make some conclusions on that, but honestly, I've got one other contender that I want to throw in and see what happens with that one. I'll go get it and we'll put it on the pile. So I'm going to make up a surprise reveal here um, for tomorrow. What I did was I made a mixture of my gasified charcoal, sulfur, and potassium nitrate. And I'm going to ball mill these things. I'm taking a little break from making my uh, iron ore in order to use my ball mill to mix gunpowder. My, uh, my sources tell me that the British did this. Uh, the, the difference for the British, of course, was that they used... Um, lead balls, because lead balls don't spark, and I don't have lead balls, I have uh, steel ones, and steel balls do spark. However, it is a wet mix, so hopefully I can avoid sparking. Uh, rock tumblers are made to hold wet um, mixtures, so I'm going to just make sure it's plenty wet. I don't actually have enough of this wet, but I think I actually am ready for a direct deposit, so I'll go do that. And uh, then we'll take it out and set it running. I'm only going to run it for a few hours because if it dries out in there, um, yeah, I might have a problem. Remember, black powder is not actually um, a high explosive in terms of the uh, velocity of the shock wave through the mixture. Um, it's really not that explosive at all. It just burns rapidly. Um, but because it's going to be enclosed in this barrel, that's an explosion. So I really don't want to have this stuff catch on fire. This stuff, I made a kilogram of it because I figure it's kind of inherently a wasteful process to to do the ball mill thing. I'm not going to get a great yield. So I'm going to I'm going to wet that down a little bit more and then we'll take it outside. This is my ball mill black powder. Um, I milled it wet, pretty wet. It's been drying all night, still pretty wet. Um, obviously going to let this dry up and then we'll give this a test along with the other powders. One of the interesting things about trying to recreate uh, historical verisimilitude is that this stuff smells very strongly of semi-rancid pea. Now it's not the first time I've smelled like pea. It's not even the first time I smelled like my own pee, but frankly, it's rather unattractive. So hopefully the quicker this dries out, the quicker I can avoid the smell of old nasty pee. Okay, for our final two contenders, first we have five grams of gunpowder mixed with the ball mill and wet mixed with the ball mill and uh, uncorned. I'm going to back up for this one. Ah, yes. That was very nice. That was quite exuberant. And this is the same, but corned. Not sure I saw that much difference. Well, let's... uh. Go inside and do some figuring, and we'll call this one done. So let's take a look at our results. You can see that the powdered charcoal did better, actually across the board, and it appears that the wet mix is superior to the uh, dry mix in pretty much every instance, and for some reason the corn mixing really didn't make a difference, and I do have to grant that the corn mixes were um, already wet mixed and then crushed. The other thing to note is that graphite is a loser. Um, the ball milling numbers are smaller, but they were much sparkier and they threw a lot more gas, so they were more exuberant in that sense. But the size of the actual flame ball, these numbers are the number of square inches that the uh, flame ball covered up on the backdrop. So I think that uh, powdered charcoal is the winner. Thanks for joining me for this particular uh, evolution where we explored the characteristics of some gunpowder preparations. Um, 
honestly didn't know that combusting gunpowder could melt stainless steel, but it does. I learned a lot about whether or not you should heat gunpowder near other gunpowder, too, of course. Um, I have a fair amount of gunpowder left. I was frankly thinking about keeping it, but now I'm thinking maybe not. It turns out this stuff's dangerous. And the other thing I do have, of course, is if I ever want to continue to make air quotes pollen on air quote, I, I have the way to do that. So anyway, thanks very much for watching. Uh, please feel free to uh, like and subscribe or tell your friends or, again, don't tell your friends if you don't want. Don't, I would have to tell you not to try this at home. This turned out to be a dangerous thing to do. Um, I'll be back later with other episodes and have a great day. Thanks for watching.